Hi, and welcome again to Arts Alive here on McMinnville Community Media. I'm your host, Walt Height. We're going to be talking about film today, a film that was made uh, recently by an artist named uh, Roman Martinez. It's called uh, Flirting with the Devil, and with us today is the actual writer of the original story, and the script for Flirting with the Devil, Devil, Mary Jane Strand. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice so, to be here. Yeah. So, uh, how long have uh, how long have you been in this area, Mary Jane? We moved here in 2015, so I've been here six years. Mm -hmm. And are you originally from out of state? Uh, I'm from California. I lived in Davis for a while, mm -hmm. and that's where I met Ted Bundy. I was born in Redding, so. I'm a California girl, but I'm learning to be an Oregon girl. <laughs> Love it here. Right, and so with the two words, Ted Bundy, you're going to get something of an idea of what we're going to be talking about today because this film is based on a true life experience by Mary Jane Strand uh, involving Ted Bundy. Now, before we really get into to that story, let's touch a little bit on, on the movie and, and how you came to produce this with, okay. with Roman. Well, I started out writing a story about my experiences because I was taking a memoir class, and so I felt comfortable writing about this guy that came to my house. And I wasn't even sure who it was at first, but after I researched it for three months, I realized it was the Ted Bundy that came to my house. And I knew for sure because the guy that came to my house had a license plate from Utah with my initials on it. And when I saw that in some of his pictures, I thought, holy cow, it was him. Just a real scary moment. So, and so in 2015, uh, when you realized you made this entire connection, yeah. then you, you started thinking about putting this down in, right. in, in writing, and, right. and what, what got you involved with the filming portion of it? Um, Caroline O'Brien got me involved with the, with the film group here. I was taking a writing class here in town or in with the writing group. They now call it Yamhill River Writing Group. Okay. And so Caroline said, you've got to come to my film group because because maybe we can make a film out of it. And we're talking about the, the Second Saturday yes, group? Yes, the Second Saturday film group. Okay. At um, MCM, McMinnville Community Media. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> so you, you, come, you come to a meeting and uh, tell your story and, and instantly, I, I, I imagine it would be pretty instantly, <laughs> too, we got to make this well, a film. They were very shocked because the whole story is involved around this guy that came to my house and they had no idea who it was until the last paragraph and they go holy cow that was ted bundy are you kidding and wow. that's pretty much how i felt when i discovered who it was mm -hmm. i suddenly felt really happy to be alive mm -hmm. and did you participate actually in the in some of the screenwriting for the yes i did i wrote the original screen uh production and then um, Roman Martinez mm -hmm. added to it and deleted things, and mm -hmm. so it was a collaboration. I think he, he probably added. He probably added. Knowing Roman, he probably <laughs> added a few things as well oh. to try to make the whole thing uh, more uh, more interesting. Well, perhaps. <laughs> and did you get involved at all in the, in the filming process? Did you? Uh, uh, yes. Were you on site on location? We filmed. We filmed it in my guest house in our backyard. Oh, okay. So I had a lot to do with it, and I tried to make the house look like a 1974 apartment, but, you know, after it was all said and done, it still looked like a house. 
Well, yeah. It, it, you know, it's going to take a real nitpicker to go, wait a minute. And there yeah. are people who do this, wait a minute. They, did, they didn't have that in 1974. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, you meet them all the time. And, and, and what's more difficult are exterior shots. Right. Because you were in the world of 2022 and you're trying to right. make it look like 1974. And that can be a challenge at times. It in, was. In, in the way of, of continuity and, and, and similarity with, with that time. So when, when was this film uh, produced? Uh, we finally got it out in December. We had a premiere in the middle part of last December. And uh, it went very well. We had a lot of people there. And it was just a really fun time. Yeah, I imagine, I imagine it was. So. Gosh, I, part of me hates to pry, <laughs> pry <laughs> because, be, because it is such a rather uh, surly topic, because we're talking about Ted Bundy. Right. Now, for any of you out there who've been on you know, Mars for the last 50 years and don't know who Ted Bundy was, he was a serial killer who murdered a hundred, at least a hundred, perhaps more, uh, almost, I believe, exclusively women. Uh, some lived to tell the tale, and I guess you would be among that group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. So, so tell us, if you would, I will. what happened? Uh, you mean the night I met him? Yes. Well, my roommate was making a play called Dracula, A Musical Nightmare, and she wanted me to go to the local laundromat and dye the curtains gold. So um, I went late one night because I didn't want people to see me dyeing curtains in a public laundromat. I thought I might get in trouble. So I went like 10, 30, 11 and thought, okay, no one's going to catch me doing this at this hour. and. Um, so as I'm doing the laundry, this really handsome guy comes to the front door and walks in, and I'm thinking, wow, I want to get to know him. He's cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, he comes in, and he ignored me the first hour or so. There was one other patron in the laundromat, and after she left, he got friendly. And um, yeah, so he goes, oh, those are really gold curtains. And anyway, so I started telling him about my roommate and how I'm dying curtains for this play. But I just think it's ironic. I was working on a Dracula film, and in comes Ted Bundy. And um, he's known for thinking he's Dracula, I think, because he really loves blood. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, we finally got to know each other. and. Our laundry finished at exactly the same time. And he walks me out to my car and he goes, can I look in your trunk? And I said, yeah, sure. So we looked in the trunk and we saw my tire chain, spare tire and whatnot in there. And I go, can I look in your car now? And he says, well, okay. So I go to his car and the front seat is missing. And there was a pair of handcuffs on the floor. And um, I go, what? I picked him up, what are these for? And he goes, um, he says, I'm a lawyer. I, I need them. I'm, no, he's not a lawyer. I'm studying to be a lawyer. Okay. And so I thought, oh, okay, that explains it. And then he goes, can we finish our conversation at your house? And I thought, oh, okay. I thought if, I, if he didn't come over, I'd never go out with him. So I wanted to get to know him some more. And so, yes, he comes over to my house. And then he gets really weird when he comes into my house and quits talking. He's just really sullen and quits talking to me and I just want to get him out at this point. So let me let me just interrupt you for just a second. We're talking to Mary Jane Strand uh, here on MCM's Arts Alive about an experience she had with the serial killer Ted Bundy uh, back in, in the 1970s and for which a film uh, flirting with the Devil uh, by Roman Martinez uh, has been recently produced. So let's let's get back to <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to this this tale. Yeah. So once he started acting weird, I asked him to leave, and he goes, "I'm not leaving." In a really 
weird voice, and that's when I really got scared. So I started lying and said, well, you know, my roommate could be here any time, and she's not going to be happy to see you here. He goes, oh, she'll like me. He would not leave. And I thought, why is he staying here when he's not even having a good time? So I finally thought, I'd better go upstairs and go to my bedroom because I feel like he might kill me if I stay around. So I said, I'm going, I'm going to bed now. You, you leave when you get bored. I didn't want a confrontation, so I, I just did what I had to, to do to leave the room. And then he was yelling upstairs to me saying, come back down, I'm not talking to you. I mean, I'm not done talking to you. And I said, be quiet, I'm trying to sleep. And then um, he goes, well, I'm coming up there now. And he starts coming up the stairs. And that was a real frightening experience. I thought, the guy's going to kill me if he comes up here. So, um, so then the next thing I know, it's really quiet, and I have no idea where in the house he is. And I open up my bedroom door, and he's sleeping outside my bedroom door in a fetal position. And I, I go, you don't look very comfortable there. Why don't you go sleep on my couch? And yeah, he woke up and looked up at me and said, OK. So he went down and slept on the couch. And I thought he might leave, but he never did. Till morning, morning time, I went down, and there he was on the couch. And I said, well, I'm going to work. you got to leave now. And I got a banana off the, off the counter and said, here's your breakfast. Have a banana. And then um, I sent him on his way. Hmm. <laughs> and was that your, your only encounter with uh, well, Ted Bundy? Not really. Actually, he came back three months later and stole my car. Um, Good Lord. I'm sure it was him. He tried to break in, but our, our dog was barking and scared whoever was at the door trying to get in off. And then my car disappeared. But when I got my car back, my tire chains... My spare tire and everything was missing. Hmm. Um, wow. And then when I picked up the car that the week later, they said that when my car showed up, somebody died in, in that town, Colfax, California. Somebody died. Wow. That's terrifying, terrifying and account. I would like those people to know if they lost someone in January of 1975, no one ever figured out it was him. Uh, maybe somebody else got blamed. I have no idea. Mm. Well, Bundy was finally arrested, I believe, in 1979. I think he was finally I arrested. Think so. I think that's when he was convicted and then was executed in 1989. Right. Uh, so now you've, you've also uh, been published. Yes, I'm a published author. So we're looking at, we're looking at Paper Gardens. 2017. 2017, where you have uh, written your account yes. and, and had it published. And what else do we have here? Um, Sac City in, in Sacramento, um, their students put my um, story into one of their magazines. It's called Mainline. And they have my little icon right there. It says, one hell of a date. So it's a, right. it's a good story. With <coughs> and, Bundy's signature Volkswagen. Yes. So everyone that um, read my story said, oh, you've got to make a movie out of this. So, mm -hmm. so I finally did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was uh, filmed right here in the Willamette Valley. If you ever happen to <coughs> see this film, <coughs> I know that uh, MCM shows much of Roman Martinez's material here. So check your listings. You <laughs> might see this one pop up. Uh, hopefully in the near future, and you can um, see for yourself this riveting story of Mary <laughs> Jane's unfortunate encounter with well, Ted Bundy. You gave me something to write. Well, thank you so much for coming down here today. Thank you for listening to my story. Oh, it's, it's, it's been uh, a pleasure to yeah, meet you. Yeah, it's very, very good to meet you. I'm so glad you're alive. <laughs> me too. <laughs> and, that, and that you uh, you came through that that encounter in, in one piece. Oh, yeah. Thank so, you. Okay. So uh, that's it for now. We'll see you next time on Arts Alive.